With the release of Godzilla vs. Kong, we now have four films inside of the MonsterVerse, so today I thought it was time for me to stop and ring all four films of the MonsterVerse movies, right from the worst to the best. Hey everyone, S Dub Nation here, and welcome back to a brand new ranking here on the channel. I'd like to stop and take the time to rank all four MonsterVerse films inside of the MonsterVerse. <laughs> Please note that everything that I will say in this video is just my very own opinion. My list is certainly not the right list, it is just my list, and you are free to comment down below your ranking of all four MonsterVerse films right from the worst to the best, just like me, or you could just do your favorite. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now. Also, please know that I do not hate any movies on this list. Like, I love every movie on this list, even the one that's at my number four. And I know a lot of people do not like that movie. I personally enjoyed it and loved it. With that being said, let's just get right into our ranking. Kicking off my list at number four has got to go to Godzilla King of the Monsters, a film that is trying to feel like an epic monster blockbuster with different titans fighting each other and coming out of hiding for some odd reason for the position of king. And all of that is certainly epic and big and huge in scale and I just like the fact that we're exploring the mythology a little bit more. We're bringing in more of Godzilla's rogues gallery with Mothra and Ghidorah. I think all of that is pretty great. But again, the big negative here is the humans, just like in the rest of the MonsterVerse movies. The mom inside of this film is just evil, really. I mean, I understand her motives, but she's just really evil. She has no regard for his daughter or for her daughter's father. And like I said, this is a positive and also a negative, but this feels like a big blockbuster. A negative of it is that it doesn't really need to feel like Endgame or Infinity War. Maybe because the film came out in 2019 around that big blockbuster movie season with Endgame and Captain Marvel and Toy Story 4 and Aladdin and Lion King. All these big blockbuster movies coming out and Godzilla King of the Monsters kind of felt like one of those movies. But a positive of it is that it kind of should feel huge. We have big, huge titans fighting each other. That should be great. But with so much focus on the humans like Millie Bobby Brown, she's just bad inside of this film. And the film clearly pushed in these titans because they don't even show up in the next film. And let's not forget, so much blue. Like the coloring inside of this film, you have so much blue or yellow. It's just, it's so much. But there is another positive here. Godzilla becomes the king, and I'm not even mad about that. The action here doesn't stop, but then again, who actually likes to watch Godzilla fight besides seeing him use his powers? Kick it off my top three list has got to go to Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, this is the gladiator match of the century, and it did not disappoint on the fight. The CGI here is just awesome. They humanize Kong in a way that when the outcome happens, you feel a certain type of way because you have spent this entire film focusing more on Kong, and when the thing happens, you kind of feel disappointed. I love the fact that we're focusing a little bit more on the mythology here as well. Just like how we did in King of the Monsters, we're focusing more on Kong's backstory and his mythology. And I liked all of that very much. But again here, a negative is the humans. Whereas I love the little girl, Kong's team. I love their team because they had something to do with the story. They were trying to get Kong from point A to point B. And you feel that. But Godzilla's team, actually Millie Bobby Brown's team was just the most uninteresting part of this movie and you know you kind of get bored while watching Millie Bobby Brown be the leader of this grown man and her friend and she definitely makes some bad choices as that leader but you feel satisfied with the fights that happen because whereas the movie is just big and dumb and the story isn't that good the overall monster mayhem and the battles are epic and huge in scales with a clear winner this film might be the most enjoyable on this list because you got everything that you came here for and some but i did think that the hollow earth stuff was just pushed in there just to give kong a little bit of an arc throughout the film and the fact that a couple years ago we only had 2014 and 2019 tech but now we're advanced enough to have vehicles that can fly and push through the boundaries of gravity. At least it doesn't take away from your entertainment value. My runner-up at number two has got to go to Kong Skull Island. Now, I debated heavily on this film and Godzilla vs. Kong because I just love Kong. Like, I love this big monkey. And I love just big, dumb monster movies. And that's what this film is to a certain extent. Now, in anything else, Godzilla vs. Kong beats Kong Skull Island and anything else and it would have been at number two but Kong Skull Island beats Godzilla vs Kong in one big detail this movie has interesting characters and a great story and the humans are actually central to the plot 
The human scenes are just so great inside of this film. You barely really focus on Kong, but Kong definitely has a presence inside of this film. And this is definitely his movie. But the human characters inside of this has something to do. They're doing something throughout this entire film. They have personality. There are stakes. And I just like the fact that this whole aesthetic of this film, the way that it's shot, the way the coloring, the way that we have these different 70 war movie callbacks, I love all of that. It's such a great detail. Especially when the human parts of this film is the best part. The action really never stops inside of this film. It may be dumb. It may be schlocky. But all of it is pretty well handled. But there isn't enough Kong inside of this. He's there, obviously. Like I said, he has a presence. But whereas Godzilla vs. Kong has so much Kong and monster elements, this film feels like half the Marvel cast on Skull Island with Kong. The film may be entertaining and dumb with an actual enjoyable Brie Larson this time, but it is very forgettable and, you know... I wouldn't really want to rewatch this. Maybe the seat of scenes of Kong fighting. I just love to see Kong fighting. Like, he is just raw. But coming in at my number one has got to go to Godzilla 2014. This may be the most overlooked monster film at this point, And I definitely believe more people should be talking about it. The overall faith in the Japanese history of it all is so great. You add in some great cast members like Brian Cranston. They give a little bit more gravitas to the film. Now, a big criticism that is valid is that they constantly cheat you with having a big monster charge at Godzilla, Godzilla charging at the monster, and before they fight, doors close in front of your face. But in my opinion, I don't have an issue with that. I mean, who really likes to see Godzilla fight? I would rather sit there and watch Kong fight all day. That's why I was Team Kong. I love to see Kong fight, but I only like it when Godzilla uses his powers. But I like the way that they did it. Every time that they cheated you out of Godzilla action, they would cut to a different scene. For example, they would have people falling out of planes, and then as they're falling out of planes to go to the ground, you would see Godzilla and the monster fighting each other then. I love the fact that when we're teased, like we only see Godzilla's tail, or before we see the fight, the doors close shut. At the climax, we get to see that satisfying ending when Godzilla pries open a monster's mouth and just atomic breaths down his throat. I thought all of that just made this movie special. And the fact that the film is told from the perspective of the citizens makes you feel like huge monster mayhem is ensuing. Godzilla's presence here is huge. And while this film has its negatives within the humans, you know, they're paper cut humans and, you know, brothers and sisters kissing. I think Godzilla has all of the edge of your seat action, just like Godzilla vs. Kong, all the fear just like Kong Skull Island, and the all-around monster mayhem, just like Godzilla King of the Monster, that this film needs. It's all three of the films that came after it rolled into one. This is why Godzilla 2014 has to come in at number one. All right, guys, that was it for the ranking. Please know that everything that I did say in this video was just my very own opinion. My list was certainly not the right list. It was just my list. And you're free to comment down below your ranking of all four MonsterVerse movies, right from the worst to the best, just like me, or you could just do your favor. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now. Like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Please don't forget to check out the regular podcast. Link is in the description. We are going to be having a spoiler discussion over there. So all of your spoiler discussions that you want to talk about, go over there to the regular podcast, and we'll have the spoiler discussion there. With that being said, I will see you all next time. Peace.